Alright guys, the first thing I have to say is Nintendo, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Wasn't that like the worst thing your parents ever said to you when you were a kid? I would rather than be mad. And that's how serious this is, Nintendo. Okay, first up, I need to get this out of the way. I love Nintendo. From the NES to the Switch, I have loved Nintendo every day of my freaking life. And why have I loved Nintendo as much as I always have? The games and the quality of the games. Nintendo's mindset behind their video games has always been fun. Literally, every game they make, they cram fun into every aspect so that at its core, it is an enjoyable experience for as many people as possible. That is Nintendo. That's what's kept Nintendo alive as a company, even through failed consoles like the Wii U, because it still had fantastic games. It was Miyamoto himself that once said, a delayed game is eventually good, but a bad game is forever. Or something like that. I don't know the direct quote. Which is why, when I look at the mobile games, I start to wonder, what is the mindset here? Do you really think you are making amazing quality games for everyone to enjoy? So putting Nintendo quality games onto a phone, that would be a good idea. But as of yet, Nintendo hasn't done that. <laughs> they have not put a Nintendo quality game onto a phone. What they have done is what we're gonna talk about today. And look, I haven't talked about any of these mobile games yet, at all. Even though I'm huge in the Nintendo, I've left it alone because end of the day, they're not for me. I don't find any of them very enjoyable. But going back to like 2016 and watching Nintendo's slow decline into whatever the heck this game is now, it's comedically hilarious in a way and nothing about it represents Nintendo at its core, in my opinion. Like, going back to Mario Run in 2016, Nintendo had a very Nintendo approach to that game. Was it the best game ever? No, it was fine. I actually didn't mind it. I kind of like the run and jump genre of games on mobile phones, but the approach to it that was very Nintendo was how they sold it. You could pick that game up and play the first few levels for free, and then for $10, you could unlock the rest of the game and you were done. It was a very basic model and it just felt very Nintendo generous. $10 for that entire Mario game. Okay, it's not for me, but fine. And that is actually what we're going to be looking at today because believe it or not, I've actually done research for a video, so smash like on this video for me actually trying for once. And we're gonna take a look at all of Nintendo's mobile attempts. So there's like five or six games they've done and it's really interesting, really interesting watching so clearly their mindset change from Mario Run to Mario Tour through these games and it's all based on money. It's interesting I think to see Nintendo's approach to making money and what they consider a failure in terms to making money out of the game. There's like a whole nother thing I want to talk about in regards to Pokemon Go. It's so freaking scummy and they did something recently that technically breaks the App Store terms of service and we're gonna get to that but I want to focus on the Nintendo published ones. So with all that said and speaking about making money I'm just like sponsored by G Fuel now, like all the time, consistently and constantly. This is a new flavor, Cherry Limeade. Haven't tried this one yet. You want 30% off? You could get it, baby. Delicious. Now I want to take you guys back to 2016 when Super Mario Run released. I already talked about it briefly, but let's look at some figures. And I know figures, okay, numbers, figures might be boring, but in this case, it's actually very interesting. So bear with me here because this gets spicy. So Super Mario Run, it was free at first, then $10 to unlock the game. In its first week, it made 14 million in sales. 14 million dollars in sales. And on the Monday following the game's release, Nintendo's stock price dropped more than 7% due to its poor market reception. So as far as mobile games go, making 14 million on a budget $10 game in the first week was apparently bad enough to drop Nintendo stocks by 7%. Within the first three weeks, it made 30 million in revenue from around the 3% of people who bought the full game after downloading it, and $53 million in the first year. And apparently, according to Nintendo, was a flop. They didn't make their money back, apparently. They, did, they, they, they didn't make money from that. It wasn't profitable. Surely making that Mario Run game wasn't that difficult. Surely it, it didn't have $50 million invested into it. 
surely. But regardless of that, it, it is interesting when you compare that number to Fire Emblem Heroes. So as I said, Mario Run made 53 million in its first year, Fire Emblem Heroes made 240 million in its first year, and that game was free. You didn't have to spend a single dollar. So we've gone from a game where you had to spend 10 to play it to a game where you had, didn't have to spend anything, and it made so much more. So Fire Emblem uh, Heroes released in 2017 in February. The thing you paid for in that game was you paid to unlock more powerful characters. However, you didn't know what character you were gonna get and what their stats were going to be. You're following me here? It had loot boxes. So during the first day of the release, Nintendo reported the game generated more than 2.9 million dollars in the first day. And as of February 2019, the game has made 500 billion dollars. That's a lot of- that's a lot of dollars. I could buy you a lot of burritos at Taco Bell. I don't know why my mind went there. Maybe I'm hungry. <laughs> and they went on record saying they preferred the way they did Mario. They preferred that way of selling their mobile games at the price point, but it's not beneficial to them. Which is- I get that, but it gets worse. So then in November of 2017, we actually do get a breath of fresh air here. I like this. I like this one. Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. This game was actually pretty good. I played this one. I didn't mind it at all. I'm not a huge Animal Crossing guy, but I thought I would try this out because it was free and I have a phone. Bethesda was right. <laughs> the thing about this game that made it a good mobile game was it kind of represented the mainline titles fairly well. It was actually pretty close to those games in quality. There was like a budget scale down version, but they did it really well. And the microtransactions were handled even better. So in everything in the game, you have to make it, you have to craft it, and it takes a certain amount of time. And the longer you play, the longer these times are. It takes hours to make a certain thing, or you can just pay to have it made right away. Now there's two reasons that I actually like this in this game. One, this person here on Vice, they actually compared the, the mobile game to the mainline 3DS title before it, and it was actually quicker crafting most things in the mobile game than the 3DS game, where you couldn't pay to have things sped up. And if you didn't want to sit around, and you did, this is the second thing that I don't mind, if you wanted to speed it up, you at least knew what you were paying for. You are paying for this thing that you are crafting to be done now. You put your money in, you know exactly what you're getting, that's it, you're done. You don't feel ripped off because it wasn't a gamble. As of September 2018, a year after its release and the last thing I could find on it, the game grossed 50 million. Okay, I mean, that's a lot of money to me, but apparently, according to Nintendo, that's a flop. If Mario Run was a flop at 53 million, Animal Crossing was obviously a flop at 50 million. So now, at this point in Nintendo's eyes, they're one for three. And this is where things start to get interesting. You ever heard of Dragalia Lost? No? Me either. <laughs> I hadn't heard of this before I started researching this video, but apparently it's a Nintendo published RPG game for mobile. Apparently just pretty bland and uninspired, it's not a bad game at its core. Again, I haven't played it, hadn't even heard of it before, but this game grossed 16 million in its first two weeks and raised over 50 million at the end of 2018. And so in like September to December, it made 50 million dollars. So this Dragilia Lost game that I had never heard of before and definitely doesn't have Mario clout, made way more money than Mario Super Mario Run did. How? How is that possible, you might be asking? Well, guess what? You have to pay to unlock characters, powerful characters with random abilities, and you never know what you're gonna get. It's gambling, again. So they went with the Fire Emblem method of doing things. And that's, <sighs> whatever again, I guess. My stance up until here, it's whatever. You can see Nintendo is, is testing the waters here. Now they've done four games, two of them were the way they probably wanted to do them, and two of them were the way that was making them money. Uh, yes, Dragilia didn't make as much money as Fire Emblem, but again, I never even heard of it. But it made more than Mario. So in Nintendo's eyes, that's probably a win. Also, I will say that apparently that game was really bad for microtransactions when it released, and Nintendo reportedly asked them to tone it down. So there's that. So we're on the fifth game now. Dr. Mario World, which released in July 9th, and I forgot, I actually downloaded it the other night when I started thinking about making this video. And here's what I find 
really interesting about this game, and it directly plays into what we're about to see in Tour, in my opinion. Dr. Mario, uh, it's like a puzzle game, you know. Actually, the way they did this, it's eerily like uh, Candy Crush. Not only the way it's set up, and you have these hub worlds where you go level by level, you have a timer with like the amount that you can play levels until you run out, and then you have to wait for it to recharge or pay to get more plays. If you lose, and you're like this close to beating the level, you can pay a little bit or use your collected whatever if you have it to keep going. It's structured a lot like Candy Crush, but also visually, it just has a weird mobile-y Candy Crush aesthetic to it. So you do have those ways, uh, I guess, of speeding things up. So they've gone back to the Animal Crossing way, which you might think, well, that's failed twice. Why are they trying a third time? They've actually meshed their two ideas into this one, and you can see what they were trying to hope for. So on top of that, on top of being able to pay to have things done quicker, you can also pay to unlock characters. You don't know who you're gonna get, and you don't know what their stats are gonna be. So for example, you can unlock Dr. Mario, Dr. Bowser, Dr. Peach, and a bunch of others that can be purchased with coins or free currency owned by completing levels, or diamonds, which can be bought with real money in packs ranging from $1.99 to $69, Lamal to 69.99. For starters, who's spending seventy dollars to get a bunch of gems to unlock characters? Don't understand. In fact, not many people did do that. When you look at how much money this game made, it's kind of sad actually. But it's what they call a, g a gotcha, a gacha system, similar to the Fire Emblem Heroes and Dragalia Lost, where you don't know what you're gonna get. It's a gamble. It's a random. You're at the mercy of the game as to what it gives you, and you can tell that it's Nintendo. They've gone two for two, and on this fifth one they're like well what if we just and we'll have something amazing we'll have a freemium game where you don't have to spend any money but you can if you want things to happen quicker or if you want to be better at the game with better characters and how did that work out for them in the first three weeks a hundred thousand dollars Pretty bad. That's that was just in US. I couldn't find figures for anyone else anywhere else, but that's <sighs> I didn't hear anyone talking about this game at all. So I would say that one definitely flopped, which is weird because you would think merging the ideas would help more than the other ideas, if even by a little bit, but I guess this game just didn't work. To be fair, it's not that good. None of these games are good. <laughs> oh, then ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for. Mario Kart Tour crappy crap 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 crappy crappy crap 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 Mario Kart Tour all right so this came out recently let me just give my first opinions on the actual game itself the base game is fine visually it looks fantastic I kind of like how they've built their own courses for this it kind of feels like its own standalone Mario Kart game just not good but when you get three of a kind <laughs> you get like the frenzy and you can go crazy I kind of like that actually end of the day though the racing is horrible I don't know why they didn't implement motion controls to kind of go like this as much as I usually hate motion controls but the way they've done it is so stupid you can pick between two modes of play one is like just you can't drift you just press either left or right on your screen and it'll go either left or right very slowly I could literally finish a race by just holding down one way and like grinding into a wall and it will push me to the finish line anyway there's like literally no way to not get to the finish line in this game but there's the way of doing it with no drifting or you can opt to have drift and then you open only drift. Can you imagine playing Mario Kart 8 and your options are either like you can't drift or you can only drift? I mean, to be fair, I pretty much only drift in Mario Kart 8 anyway, but... <laughs> so the controls are kind of eh. I got used to them after a little bit. It's fine. It's whatever. The gameplay is it's just it's just mediocre. But there's a lot of things. Uh, there's a lot of things about this game that are, that are very, very shady to me. To start with, I naturally assumed I was playing online when I started racing. Apparently, it just generates names and it kind of makes you... It kind of like tricks you into thinking you're racing other people, which made me inherently more competitive. And I kind of feel like that mentality kind of forces or makes people feel like they should spend more money on the game to be better at it, to beat the people they're racing, and they might not realize they're not actually racing anyone. It's a little dodgy. But it doesn't stop there. In fact, it only starts there. So here's the ways you can spend money in this game. And maybe there's more, because there's a lot. <laughs> the main one is that there's the pipe, which is the loot box. And if you want to buy the key for the loot box, which are these little gem diamond things, which by the way, since when was there gems in Mario Kart or like anything Mario? Am I missing something? I mean, the coins is the currency you earn. Why aren't these like stars? 
or literally anything from Mario. This just feels like I'm looking at a generic mobile game. Maybe I'm missing something. You can buy three of these for $2. To fire the pipe, it cost five. Oh, I'm shooting the pipe right now. I didn't realize I had some. Let's see what I get. No, oh, I got baby Mario. That's actually a pretty good one. <laughs> so to fire the pipe, you need um, five. To buy three, it's two dollars. Am I missing something? So if I buy the lowest amount, I still have to turn around and buy another three and then have one left over. So then if I want to do it again, I buy another one, I'd have four. So I'd have to buy one more and then I'll have three left over. So then I have to buy another one. You see what I'm getting at here? Why is it three? You really are gonna wanna spend six dollars and get 10 is the better deal here. You get one bonus one and you can get 10. Then you can fire the pipe twice. Lucky you, you're spending six dollars, six dollars and you can fire the pipe twice. You get one thing per fire. You can get a character, a cart, or a glider. So there's a pretty good chance you could spend $6 and get two gliders. And you can get duplicates. You could spend $6 and get two of the things you already have and both of those could be gliders. You might be thinking, yeah, but you could get characters like that cool baby Mario you just got. My experience, that's not really how it works. In fact, if I go ahead and click click on this link right here, there is a 5% chance at getting characters like Dry Bones, Baby Daisy, Baby Mario. There is a 1% chance at getting the main characters like Donkey Kong, Bowser, Peach, Mario. I'm playing a game called Mario Kart and I only have a 1% chance of getting the guy the game is named after. And I feel like that's one that a lot of people are going to want because it's Mario. Then we go down and we see for high-end characters, these are ones that were highly requested to be in the game. So Nintendo knows people want these. 0.3% chance. Dry Bowser, Metal Mario, Peachette, so on. 0.3% chance. So I'm really bad at math, so bear with me if my math in this video is wrong. Either way, basic math would tell me if there's a 1% chance of getting Mario, I would have to unlock a hundred pipe blows, pipe shoots, pipe explosions to get a 100% chance of getting Mario. And even then, there's still a chance you might not get him. The fire pipe costs $3 and you need to fire it a hundred times. You'd have to fire that pipe $300 worth of times. It... And then a lot of these characters, they have like things about them that make them better, make them faster, you know, the carts and the combinations of everything make you better at it. So it really, it does become like a pay to win in a way. The more I played, the more I was losing and the more things I would unlock with better stats, the better I would do. And it's gambling on a game that at its core isn't that well designed and isn't that fun to play. And it doesn't just end there for Mario Kart Tour. There's another option that you, that get, that you could get your wallet out for and start throwing more cash into the game monthly, a subscription service to this game for five dollars a month you could possibly get gold gifts for racing in tours you could earn badges and you unlock the 200 cc mode it's okay the 200 cc mode at least you're getting something for sure at least there's something in this that isn't a gamble but is it really worth five dollars like when you compare that to nintendo's online service that's only three dollars a month or 20 bucks for the entire year where you get a bunch of free games you can play like nes and snes stuff and you can play all their games that have online capabilities online and then you look at this one game one very average game you could spend five dollars a month or sixty dollars for a year do you think this is three times the quality of the nes and snes games furthermore some people have criticized it even further because apple announced some new arcade thing where you could play 70 plus mobile games if you subscribe for five dollars a month without microtransactions. All 70 of those games don't have microtransactions. $5 a month and you get 70 games. I don't think this is worth the price of 70 mobile games. I don't think this is worth double the price of Nintendo Online. Yeah, you get one extra mode out of it, big freaking whoop. But other than that, all you're really paying for here is the same old stuff, but with better chance of getting slightly better loot. You still have to do all the other stuff. You still have to buy the loot boxes. It's not like it's a $5 buyout where you no longer have to pay for things in game. <laughs> no, it just adds a little bit more to what you're already paying. Where is it going to end? Like, what, what app is next for Nintendo where they're not only going to do the pay-to-win and the random characters and a $5 
subscription. And where did my chair go? I don't know. Maybe I didn't pay Nintendo enough microtransactions. Here, I'll send them 10 bucks and maybe they'll give me my chair back. But before I do my, my ending point, I did say I wanted to take a look at Pokemon Go. For the sake of this video not being too long, I'm gonna keep this short. Niantic had done some really scummy things, and there's one in particular I wanna draw attention to here, but the thing I think is scummy in general about Pokemon Go is I've never seen a game hide its loot boxes so well in plain sight. The thing about other, these other free Mario Nintendo games is that you play them, there's options there, but they're over there. The thing about Pokemon Go is the loot boxes, they literally give them to you like candy. They give you the boxes and that you're trapped with them on your possession in your inventory. These eggs, they throw them at you whether you get a present from someone, you got a Pokestop, there's an egg. They give you the loot boxes, but they don't give you the key. I think that's a little dodgy. I think it's like mentally, there's something that goes into that that makes you feel like you have possession over something, an egg that you want to nurture and open because it's there and you're already walking. You're already going the miles, the kilometers that go into hatching things. And it's like you're wasting your time not hatching the things you have in your possession. I think there's something mentally there that makes you want to go and then spend money to open it. Whereas if you just bought the eggs, let's say there was a store, you could go and buy an egg, you could adopt an egg or whatever. Instead of buying an incubator, which is like two, three dollars or whatever, you buy an egg for two or three dollars. Now you have it, now you walk with it and you've opted in. I think mentally they would make a lot less money doing it that way, which is why they didn't do it that way. But fine, let's say you're the kind of person that even though you have these eggs, you don't feel like you, you need to buy incubators, you get one free one and you'll just hatch your free one with that incubator and the fact that you have have eight other eggs and your inventory doesn't mess with your OCD like it does mine. I couldn't find the percentage rates for like all the Pokemon and I feel like it does change all the time. But for example, hyper rare Pokemon, I like 3.4% of getting a hyper rare Pokemon in one of these eggs. The games like Fire Emblem and Mario Kart, it isn't about getting all the characters. It's not about having a complete roster. But in Pokemon, the aim of the game is literally catch them all. You have to catch them all. That is the point. That's what drives you, is catching them all. It costs 150 gold coins to get the base incubator, a dollar to get 100 coins. So it's $2 per incubator at a 3% chance of actually getting the one Pokemon you need. Do the math. To hatch these unknown Pokemon, the ones that are in like the shapes of letters and stuff, it's a 12 in 332 chance of hatching them in a 10K egg. So in order to have at least a 50% chance to hatch an unknown, you have to hatch 19 eggs. At 63 eggs, this raises to 90%, and at 100 eggs, you're at 97%. So at 100 eggs, at $2 an egg, you're at $200 to get maybe get one of these unknown out of the 28. Let's hope you don't get a double the second time around. And at the end of the day, if you don't have an issue with any of this, I want to look at this. I'm actually subbed to the Pokemon Go subreddit, and I actually did see this thread when it came up. With the most recent shiny regional egg event, we have evidence presented that the rates were changed from 1 out of 50 to 1 out of 150 to get a shiny regional. They changed the drop rates during this event. So it was harder, it was it was three times harder, I think, math, to getting one of these things. Here's the thing, like this guy, for example, typically I will buy 20 to 30 incubators per event. So he bought these incubators and then found out they had changed the hatch rate. They found in Apple's App Store developer guidelines in section 3.1.1, <laughs> now we're getting technical, clearly states that apps offering loot boxes or other mechanics that provide randomized virtual items for purchase must disclose the odds of receiving each type of item to customers prior to purchase. Not only could I not find the odds for many of these things online, no matter how hard I looked, despite that, if they are out there somewhere, you can't change it after the fact. Not only does it break the guidelines and the terms of service, but it's also just scummy to me. There's no reason to make something like that harder like the, the chance of getting it even harder unless you want more people to spend more money. And if we're talking about money, Pokemon Go has made $3 billion so far. Three billion dollars. Now that is a lot of burritos from Taco Bell. That's actually on par with the highest grossing Pokemon games, which was red, blue, and yellow. And it's actually like, a, like one billion more grossing money mass. <laughs> 
than the next highest Pokemon games, which were silver and gold. It's profitable. I don't think you need to be trying to increase the rates of things to make people spend more money when you're already making three billion. Now we go back to my overarching point here. Nintendo, your mindset to your games and mobile games or not, these are your games. Your mindset to your video games has always been quality. But here's the thing, none of these games to me are fun at their core and at best they're knockoffs of other mobile games that have come and gone. Mario Run? Fine. It's fine. It's good. It's fine. But isn't it just like Temple Run? Dr. Mario to me seems like a reskin of Candy Crush. Mario Kart? It's just you can left and right. That's it. That's the entire game. I mean, that's like so many mobile games. If it's not about the games and the fun and the quality and the innovativeness of the game, what is it about? Well, it's about the money, and it's about how much money they can make, and you look at the first game that they did to the newer ones, and they just get greedier and greedier and greedier, and the quality of the games aren't getting any better. They're staying consistently air. I don't think any of these games are very fun, or worth my time, or worth playing, let alone starting to pump money into it, hoping that I unlock Mario at a 1% chance. Really? I guess just be responsible if you're gonna play these games because it is gambling. I'd really like to hear your opinions down below because I just have mine and you have yours. If you're new here, ah, subscribe. Hey, if you're a regular here and you want to support the channel, let's, speaking of selling out, remember to hair. Oh, my hair's stuck in the new shirt. Remember to hair flip all over that subscribe button. And if you're addicted to beat em ups, why don't you prove it by buying a shirt? I love you guys. Thanks so much for watching this. I'm gonna bum myself out. Bye.